Hello viewers and welcome to InfoGist TV. Breaking currently plans to overthrow Tinibu Tikins as judiciary, conniving with the All Progressive Congress to cause chaos. The People's Democratic Party and the All Progressive Congress clashes following the sacking of Governor Caleb Nufwang of Plateau State by the Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja. Now in a judgment on Sunday, a three-member panel of the Court of Appeal led by Justice Elfrida Williams Dawadu ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to withdraw the certificate of return issued to Mufuang and issue a fresh one to Netawe Goshi of the All Progressive Congress, whom the court declared as a valid winner of the March 18 governorship election. Mutuang was the third opposition governor to be sacked by the Court of Appeal within three days. Now, last Thursday, the appellate court had nullified the election of another PDP Governor Dauda Lawa of Zamfara State, declaring that the governorship election in the state was inconclusive and thus following the same court invalidated the election of the Kano State Governor Abba Kabi Yusuf of the new Nigerian People's Party. Now worried by the Serial losses suffered by their governors and lawmakers at the courts, the P PDP, which is the People's um, Democratic Party, Deputy Legal Advisor Okechuku Usoha, declared that the recent court judgments were not in tandem with the law. But the Director of Publicity for the APC, Bala Ibrahim, reposted that it was people who did not understand how the judicial processes works. That we are accusing both the APC and the presidency of trying to turn Nigeria into a one-party state. Mutwang of the PDP had scored 525299 votes, while the candidates of the APC Goshe pulled 481,370 votes in the March 18 governorship election in the states. Now, Goshe challenged the victory of Muj Wang at the tribunal, claiming that the governor was not validly nominated and sponsored by his party. He also said there was non compliance with the Electoral Act in the election. The Governorship Election Petition Tribunal had dismissed his petition for lacking in merit, but Goshe headed to the appellate court. But however, Justice Williams Dawudu in the lead judgment set aside the decision of the tribunal. The judge held that Mufuang was not validly sponsored by the PDP and that he was not qualified to have contested the election because the P PDP did not conduct valid state, local government and world congresses ordered by High Court of Plateau State and it had no structure as at that time of the election. Citing section 177 of the constitution, she held that the governor was not validly sponsored by the PDP during the election. She also held that the party violated a court order directing it to conduct a valid congress in the 17 local government areas of that state. Williams Dawudu said there was no evidence that the PDP complied with a subsisting high court order which had directed it to conduct the party congress prior to its sponsorship of the governorship and other candidates. The court held that the issue of qualification is both a pre-election 
and a post-election matter, contrary to the findings of the tribunal, which held that the appellate, uh, that the appellant rather lacked the locus to contest the validity of the respondent. The court also noted that under Section 134 of the Electoral Act, it is the sole right of a political party to sponsor its candidate having met the necessary requirements to do so. So she then ordered INEC to retrieve the certificate of return issued to the governor and issue a fresh certificate of return to the Goshe. Williams Dawudu said the judgment of the tribunal affirming the election of Governor Caleb stands to be set as stands to be set aside. That this appeal is hereby allowed, the issue is resolved in favor of the appellants. And speaking on the verdict, the deputy PDP legal advisor Kusoha, who said he did not have a copy of the judgment, yet explained that there were three grounds for the election petition matter. He said one is that when somebody is claiming that he won an election with the most number of valid votes, the person will have to prove it. And the second is malpractice. A person who alleged would have to prove it. Then qualification, whether the person was qualified or not. So these are the grounds. It is in the public domain that Nigerians and the People's Democratic Party PDP are not too comfortable with the judgments from the courts these days. In the ruling party, APC, impunity is so much. They try to influence some of these institutions to force their party on Nigerians. This is the ugly side of it. Also, I have stressed that most of the recent judgments are not really entanglement with the law. Most times, the justices come up with technicalities. The court, in his words, now portrays itself as a court of technicalities and not a court of justice, and it is not too palatable for our system. It is not so for our country and democracy as a whole. The lawyer also noted that there is still a window for the party Amfuang to appeal the judgment. The people hold the judiciary in high esteem, so that confidence should not be eroded. Nigerians, in his words, is suffering today because most of our institutions are not strong. I believe that our legal system, our court, should stand out. The court should be impartial in their decision, he admonished. Also, the People's Democratic Party Deputy National Youth Leader, Timothy Osadolo, alleged that the highest bidders were getting favorable rulings nowadays. Osadolo warned that the clock is ticking and they think patience of our people is running out, that our judges should remember the heroes past or become today's heroes by excusing themselves from money-tainted judgments and pronouncements. Some people want to force the all-progressive Congress on Nigerians, but we will resist it, he said. Meanwhile, the new Nigerian People's Party's national auditor, Ladipo Johnson, described judgment as part of the judicial rascality that is unfolding today. Johnson, in an interview with our correspondent, declared that the All-Progressive Congress has a long way to go to forest itself on Nigerians. He said the bottom line is that the judiciary have put themselves on trial because of some inconsistent principles that we are seeing. Most recent judgments by the judiciary are very troubling to a lot of us in this country. Now, on whether this is a deliberate effort to foist the All Progressive Congress on Nigerians, he said, even if this is not an attempt to foist the All Progressive Congress on Nigerians, it will have the effect. It is a long way for them to force APC on Nigerians because PDP has many states. So it is far away from it. The NMP 
the NMPP National Auditor declared that so there is judiciary rascality going on. Yes, I haven't read the judgment, but from the extract I've seen, there is a sort of rascality going on. Now, we no longer have confidence in the judiciary, but we are hoping that the Supreme Court will put some clarity on these issues and follow their precedent as it were. The leadership of the Labour Party also expressed concern that the administration of President Bola Ametinibu might have been using the judiciary to hold opposition parties and steal the mandate of the people. Reacting to the sacking of three opposition governors by the court, the chief spokesperson for the LP campaign organization, Yenusa Tanko, concluded that the judgment might have been spoiled by some vicious persons in the executive arm of government who were using the judiciary as a tool to capture the states. He said, As I said earlier, this particular set of people in power are vicious politicians. I repeat the word vicious again for emphasis. Gradually, in his words, we are beginning to witness completely captured states where all the institutions have already been bought, intimidated or blackmailed to do the biddings of present political party and government in power. There is no hanky-panky about it. They are clear on what they want to do and they are putting our democracy in power. It is now left for us to really challenge these particular people, otherwise they are going to take us completely to the cleaners. And they don't care how, when, and where they do it, as long as it favors them. This is the danger, he said. He further stated that now the electorates are being discouraged from going out to vote for candidates of their choice, knowing that the mandates can be snatched. They are already in control of the state's apparatus. We had a similar situation at the point when the PDP was in power. These particular people in power will be referencing how visually everybody was joining the PDP, that is during the President Olusegun Obasanjo's administration then. There was no clear ideology and that was what gave birth to the All Progressive Congress conglomerate. But in this case, it is a different matter entirely. These people in power are just too vicious, he stated. But the All Progressive Congress Director of Publicity, Ibrahim, dismissed the allegation that the judiciary was induced by his party. He stated that nobody is turning Nigeria into a one-party state. These are some of the baseless allegations coming from people who do not know how the system works. He stated that the judiciary is independent. There is just no way any arm or the executive rather can intimidate or make the judiciary act against its own wish. People are not applying their logic sensibly, he stated. That there are areas where the ruling party has lost and we have constigated, lambasted or cast aspersions on the judiciary. We know the judiciary may have their reason to take the decisions against us. That is not to say that people should think it is the executive that is manipulating the judiciary every time we win. People should learn to be good sportsmen. Where you lose today, you may win tomorrow. We should have confidence in the system ourselves and democracy. And as long as we continue to be selective in our assessment of the system, we will always get it wrong. We should allow the judiciary to work with pitch of independence and continue to encourage the system to strengthen democracy. And finally, let us not be judgmentally selective.